Mexican conceptual artist Gabriel Orozco has been called one of the most influential artists of this decade, and probably the next one too. He was born in Veracruz, Mexico in 1962, and received his education at the National School of Arts in Mexico City, and continued his education in Madrid. The accomplished artist travels constantly, with homes in Paris, New York, and Mexico City. His work has been exhibited at the Whitney Museum of Modern Art, the Museum of Modern Art, the Guggenheim, and other distinguished galleries. The artist's roots are in conceptualism, with early influences from Marcel Duchamp's ready-made objects. Gabriel Orozco's work is nothing if not imaginative. His varied body of work includes sculpture, drawing, painting, photography, video, and installation, with a heavy emphasis on the lost, discarded, and forgotten items of everyday life. Objects once seemingly unremarkable and mundane are presented as newly fascinating. His work focuses on individual experience, transformation, and the idea of magic in the ordinary. He is often more interested in his viewers' relationships to the objects than to the objects themselves. Elements of philosophy, geometry, high abstraction, and the use of unexpected materials are often present in his work. In some of his pieces, he seeks to provoke interaction from the audience with the work, as exemplified by Ping Pond Table, a disorienting but whimsical four-person table tennis game with a small pond in the center. In expanding the traditional ping pong table, he alters the viewer's perception of the game while exploring the idea of activating a new space. The installation yogurt caps could be viewed as intentionally manipulative to the viewer, a mocking of the avant-garde or minimalist just for the sake of being provocative. To others, the piece appeared genuinely radical and edgy. It features four clear yogurt lid caps in an otherwise empty room and seems to have been born of a mere desire for people to react to it, positively or negatively. The slim, clear caps exaggerate the emptiness of the space, a possible commentary on his audience's expectations. Though works like these have been deemed overly simplistic and uninspired by some, Orozco insists that he wants to disappoint the expectations of those who wait to be amazed. He takes a particular interest in the transitory and often overlooks spaces in between, as illustrated by his photographs, Breath on Piano and Extension of Reflection. These photographs highlight the melancholy beauty and traces left behind, which are so fragile in their momentary nature that they become precious when closely observed. Breath on Piano is a photograph featuring the artist's breath as a fine mist on the polished surface of a piano. Here he invites us to examine the idea of chance and the impalpable, to consider the relationship between form and content, particularly form as it relates to photography and the many ways in which it can be captured. It is a particularly striking and personal image, evoking an appreciation for the specialness of our mere existence in the physical world. This truly encapsulates his focus on the merging of art, reality, and the blurred space between the two. The two-part self-portrait entitled My Hands Are My Heart is notable in that unlike the majority of Orozco's work, the photographs depict the human form. In the first photograph, we see the artist's hands clasped together at his chest, and in the second, he opens them to reveal a lump of clay, which he has pressed into the form of a heart. The imagery is as much about process as it is about the relationship between character and actions. Again, we see the common theme of traces left behind. The imprints in the clay made possible only in that moment by his hands. In Black Kites, we see another of Orozco's themes. His fondness for geometry and symmetry is evident in these checkered patterns, drawn in graphite onto a real human skull. This seems perhaps an attempt to bring some order and understanding to the abstract concept of death. Mobile Matrix, a massive whale skeleton suspended from the ceiling, is another work combining bone and graphite. This life-size sculpture was originally designed as a permanent installation for a library in Mexico City. The circles drawn onto its surface are a series of five interconnected grids describing the structure and movement of the body of the whale, what Orozco explains as a bi-dimensional gesture applied to a tri-dimensional body. 
Similarly, for his show entitled Asterisms, there is also a sense of geometry, of organization despite underlying chaos. The show is divided up into two different projects. AstroTurf Constellation is a collection of objects found in the artificial grass in a playing field near the artist's New York home. Sandstars is a collection of objects obtained from a coastal nature preserve in Isla Arena, Mexico. On the gallery walls for both AstroTurf Constellation and Sandstars, hang photographic gridded collages documenting each of the objects. These projects illustrate his interest in documentation and environmentalism. The work speaks to the impossibility of the earth to contain the volume of waste which human beings produce, a concern for the disruption of the natural balance. Through asterisms, Orozco also explores the concept of transforming trash into art and bringing order to chaos. Though once useless to those who discarded it, the objects, when organized by color, become interesting and special. They are given a second life by placing them in a specific context. Presence and absence, magic and reality, playful and wistful, inarguably ordinary yet somehow poetic. Gabriel Orozco's work is rife with paradoxes. If this is true, then his intentions have not been in vain, as they have caused us to pause and contemplate these paradoxes to attempt to view the world as a constant creative experience in the here and now. The work invites the audience to exist in the moment for which it is preemptively nostalgic. It is important because it asks us to broaden our ideas about what constitutes art. It is not about mass entertainment, but rather individual experience and personal reaction. If we view art and photography as being either a window or a mirror, then Orozco's work is both showing us the world while expressing his interests, concerns, and emotions about the world, and his existence in it.